Hey, it's Bang for About PC Gamer here. Uh, many of us, when we buy our CPUs these days, we uh, look for overclocking potential, and um, especially with Intel CPUs, um, most of us tend to go with the K series with the unlock multipliers. Um, after doing a bit of research, I found that once you reach a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and your CPU is around 4.2 gigahertz, you rarely see an increase in performance when you overclock your CPU above that at that resolution or above so in my case I've recently purchased an Intel i7-4790K and that runs really really fast out of the box at 4.4 gigahertz and um, I've been able to push that CPU up to 4.8 gigahertz but um, it's debatable whether I actually gain any performance by doing that so what I've decided to do is conduct a test between four games which I've chosen those games are Armour Free, which is a first person shooter game, Starcraft 2 Wings of Liberty, which is a real time strategy game, Dragon Age Inquisition, which is an open world RPG game, and last is Project Cars, which is a simulation racing game. Now, all these games are pretty different, so um, I've tried to make quite a bit of variance just to see if the um, CPU actually reacts differently to the type of game you're playing and the type of engine that's being used so the specs I'm using or the specs of my machine are um, I've got the Intel i7-4790K like I said earlier which is going to be at stock at 4.4 GHz and at overclocked 4.8 GHz I've also decided to overclock my memory as well so I'm going to have my memory at stock which I'm running is a 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance Pro Series that runs at 2400 MHz at stock and I've overclocked that to 2800 MHz so it should be interesting to see with both CPU and G CPU and memory overclocked versus stock if I get an increase in performance when it comes to gaming I personally don't think I'm going to see too much of an increase but um, I think each game does um, react differently depending to clock speeds so hopefully um, my efforts with my overclock won't be in vain. So moving on to project cars and the in-game settings I used were I used a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and uh, texture resolutions at high which is the maximum it can go antistropic filtering was at 16 times anti-aliasing was at high and uh, pretty much all the settings are at ultra um, and as high as they can go so this game is practically maxed out uh, with the visual effects pretty much every single option is enabled as well so maxed out at 1080p basically So in Project Cars, the overclocked Intel i7-4790K at 4.8 GHz shown an increase of 4.5 frames per second on average and on the minimum frames per second around about 7 frames per second increase. So a definite increase in performance, not a massive one, but um, any increase is welcome definitely. So it's good to see that Project Cars does 
shy of air in since in performance when it comes to clock speeds. So just to quickly go over the in-game settings of Dragon Age Inquisition, I used a resolution of 1920 by 1080. All in-game settings are set to Ultra. Um, ambient occlusion is set to HBAO at full. Um, Post-processing is at high, which is the maximum it can go. And multi-sample anti-aliasing is at four times MSAA, which is the highest setting you can choose. Um, obviously this game does support Mantle, but I'm using a GTX 980 Ti, so DirectX 11 is being used. So just running through Dragon Age Inquisition right now. And um, if you're into open world RPG games, then I definitely recommend this game. I think I put in around 70 to 75 hours into this game. And uh, it's a very, very good game. I did the bulk of my gameplay with the AMD R9 290X. I think at the time I had it overcut to 1130 megahertz on the core and 1600 megahertz on the memory. The same in-game settings with just um, two times multi-sample anti-aliasing. And I remember at this specific part of the game which we're looking at now, I was struggling to hold 60 frames per second and to see the GTX 980 Ti power through at 75 frames per second and, and over is pretty pleasing to the eye. Um, moving back on topic now, as you can see there is virtually no difference between an overclocked 4790K and a stock 4790K and overclocked memory when it comes to Dragon Age Inquisition. So. That is pretty disappointing, I must say, but um, I already knew in advance that some games would react more positively to have an increased core clock than other games. So hopefully the other games will show better results. So here are the StarCraft 2 in-game settings that I used. I used a resolution again of 1920 by 1080. Texture quality is at ultra. Graphics quality is this is the preset, which is pretty much at ultra. So every single setting is maxed out. And those are the in-game settings I used. This is starting to look ugly. Commander, a large Dominion force is gathering in the center of town. Then it's time to call in that special delivery we talked about. Thanks for the assist. We're with you, Raider. like a plan. Time to man up. Raiders roll. Time to man up. So looking at the results of StarCraft 2 Wings of Liberty, as you can see the overclocked 4790K definitely making a difference in this game. So that's an increase of 16 frames per second on average and 22 frames per second on the minimum so just goes to show some games do benefit from the increased core clock speeds while other games it doesn't really make too much of a difference so as far as the armor free in-game settings go i again used a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and the general settings are all set to ultra particles is at high but it is the highest setting you can choose um, HDR is at standard but that's also the highest settings when it comes to the sliders I pretty much left those at default um, HDAO was used for ambient occlusion and for FSAA I left that four times all trees and grass SMA, SMAA set to ultra and anastropic filtering set to ultra so pretty high in-game settings that were chosen for this comparison
So again with Armour 3 you can see there's virtually no difference between a stock 4790K and an overclocked 4790K at 4.8 gigahertz. But you can see there is an increase in 9 frames per second when it comes to the minimum frames. So it does have some benefits but on on the whole when you consider that the, G, the 4790K already comes at 4.4 gigahertz out of the box it's of no surprise not to see too much of an increase when it comes to overclocking. So after doing all my testing I've come to the conclusion that overclocking your CPU especially if you've got a 4790K that's already at 4.4 gigahertz um, it's not exactly going to benefit you a great deal especially if you're running at high resolutions where CPUs um, tend to show less of an impact but um, it does also show that some game engines do make um, quite a bit of um, improvement when it comes to um, core clock speeds and you do gain quite a bit of performance from it so it all depends on the game engine for me personally I've got quite decent cooling on my PC so um, with my 4.8 gigahertz overclock my max temperatures were around 76 to 74 on each core and while having it at stock it was down in the low 58 to 60 so around about 14 frames per se uh, 14 celsius increase in in heat so it's not a massive issue for me personally but if you're someone that's struggling to deal with the heat already then it probably isn't worth it anyway i hope this video has helped you guys out to wondering if overclocking is worth it for yourself if you've got the same setup as me but um, I'm definitely still going to keep my system overclocked and and yeah that's pretty much it hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching